Live from Santa Clara, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Cloud Foundry Summit 2017. Brought to you by the Cloud Foundry Foundation and Pivotal. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host John Troyer. We're here at theCUBE's coverage of Cloud Foundry Summit 2017. We're the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Happy to welcome to the program Kim Bannerman, who uh, does the developer uh, re relations at Google, uh, recently to, to, to Google, and Ben Capps, who's an analyst with Diversity Limited. Uh, thanks so much both, both for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank All you. Right. So, so Kim, you were up on the main stage yesterday and today, uh, emceeing the event. Uh, really appreciate you joining us. Um, you know, why are you at this event? You know, why is this event important for developers? So I uh, got involved with Cloud Foundry before there was a foundation. Uh, so this has been my community for almost three years now. And I'm not, I'm not one of the oldie, oldie people, but I feel like, you know, these are my people. Yeah, we, we had James on before, so. Yeah, uh, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, so uh, it's important to developers because it helps them move faster. Um, I started out my career in consulting, and so I, one of the big heavy lifting items that we would always have to do for our customers would be building a custom platform for an application. And so when I first heard about Cloud Foundry, you know, shortly after it was launched into open source, I was like, that's really interesting to me, so. And Ben, do I remember right, is this the first time you've actually been at this event in person? Yeah, it's funny, so I've been uh, covering Cloud Foundry, writing about Cloud Foundry since before it was called yeah, Cloud yeah, Foundry. Come on, ben, you were one of those like, cloud yeah, people talking like about PaaS right? and the future, the surface, you know, right. years about that stuff, so. Yeah, and it's bizarre, I remember when Heroku and Engine Yard were, were all it was when it, when, yeah. when it comes to PaaS. So I've, I've been following the space, but I've never actually been to a Cloud Foundry Summit, so it's awesome to be here and to, um, to kind of get a sense uh, and vibe of, of the community, which is uh, which is always a really important thing. All right, Finn, what, what's your take so far? You know, what's your kind of overlay of the market? We're not talking about paths so much anymore, so what are no, we talking no, about? No, it's interesting, and, and just recently I wrote a post kind of, uh, you know, um, opining about the, the death or otherwise of paths. Uh, I think what we're seeing now is that, that really what Cloud Foundry is is, is more than more than a pass. It's really a, it's really about a fabric, a, a control fabric for a, a bunch of different modes of, of operating. Uh, and so from that perspective, it's been really great to be here, um, seeing you know, the new announcements. Obviously, Microsoft joining is, is, is a big deal, but things like Kubo, uh, um, it, it really does position Cloud Foundry in this container serverless world. Yeah. Kim, uh, we, were, we were joking with Chip when we had him on earlier, talked about like enterprise grade, and you know, that means like a salesperson goes in and you know, the front of the, you know, the, the C-level suite talking about digital transformation. How, how do you reconcile that with what you're hearing from developers? How, how do you have kind of the, the business and developers, are they coming together more? Right, so I'll tell you this. Um, if you see a message in tweets or collateral or a deck or a talk, um, and it kind of hits you wrong, I'll, understand that you may not be the intended audience. So I think that serves a really, uh, that, that will speak to a CTO level type of person. But increasingly nowadays, we're seeing enterprises saying, hey, don't call me enterprise. We're actually an internet company like you are, Google. We want to be like you. You know, Don't call us this legacy old school, all these different connotations that are attached to enterprise. And really, we're just talking about larger companies of 10,000 employees or above, right? So um, as far as like meeting in the middle, um, you know, the new Kingmakers, I love that book, you know, Red Monk, great yeah, people. We're going to have Steve O'Grady on yep, later, so. love them. <laughs> um, it, it was, I was seeing this happening when I started organizing user groups um, back in Atlanta in 2010 and 2011, where deals were happening, but used to happen and say, here, I may, I'm signing this, but you're going to have to live with it, and I'm throwing it over the fence to my team, and we're done. More and more, those folks are coming into EBCs, uh, tech leads, architects, developers, systems, and, you know, administrators, DevOps, whatever. Um, so they're they're absolutely influencing the deal, and they really do want to see it and try it, and, and know that they've got a community behind them supporting them before they agree. Kim, you have worked with a lot of uh, different developers, uh, you know, in your perspective, you know, now at Google mm -hmm. and, and IBM was the last place. Yep. You know, and. So sure, the developers are going to be the new kingmakers, but they're they're having to choose between different platforms. And the mm -hmm. joke used to be at the front end, right? The web, the web HTML people, 
the, the great thing about JavaScript is there's so many frameworks to choose from, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and they're tearing their hair out every year because there's a new set. Mm -hmm. Now the back end, right, the, the folks who are doing the orchestration and the distributed systems and all the stuff we're talking about here, mm -hmm. they also have some choices to make and look at different, different architectures, look at different stacks. What do you see as, as the developers that you're talking with, you know, how are they approaching this in, a, in this multi-cloud world uh, right. that they're dealing with? Um, you know, Ben made a good point on Twitter earlier today about, you know, multi-cloud, they, it, it happens for multiple reasons. Someone said this is the reason, and then Ben, I'll let him speak to that, I won't steal his thunder. Um, but for me, it's um, it's different. We can say it from the product level, it's different use cases. Um, but quite frankly, there are multitudes of various different types of developers doing various different types of applications inside of any given large customer. Um, so you can, that's why you've seen, not to chill, Google has partnered and we are offering, we're doing PCF, uh, Google Roadshows, kind of getting in with each other's customers because that's definitely a big use case that we keep seeing. And then we also have, you know, container engine that's run by uh, Kubernetes. So. Um, it just, it's just a matter of, you know, who Google your developers is, Google are. Google is big enough to embrace, yeah. embrace a lot of sets of developers. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and it's not just about developers, which is a big pet peeve of mine. Yeah. And you got to think about all my ops people too, um, and everyone else that's keeping the ship running, so. Shout out to the ops yeah, people. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ben. Yeah, so, what was your what was your comment on Twitter? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I guess there's a couple of different options, and, and we've sort of been told that that multi-cloud, you know, the value prop is that you know you've got a workload running on GCP, you want to move it to 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 Azure or or, or AWS. It's less about that, and it's more about uh, the the CIO deciding that it uh, that she w wants to enable her developers to use whatever platform they want to use, and so. Um, yeah, it's funny, you know, the, the developers of the new Kingmakers um, kind of meme. I, I, I'm not 100% comfortable with that because I think that absolutely developers build the solutions that allow an organization to be agile, but really it's, it's still the, the CIO that gives them, or that allows them, gives them the framework to use whatever tools they need. So I actually think that the, the sort of developers versus, versus IT kind of tension um, is actually a fake one, and, and what really needs to happen, and what we're seeing in, in these more forward-looking large enterprises, is the bringing together of those two worlds and enabling developers to, to use what they need. And, and I totally agree with what Kim said about, about, about speed. At the end of the day, it's not, it's not the big that eat the slow, it's, it's the fast, uh, sorry, it's not the big that eat the small, it's the fast that eat the slow. And so, you know, large enterprises want to, want to feel more like a, a startup, more like an agile organization. So, I think that sort of that enterprise grade kind of way of looking at the world was a world was was a way of looking at it from from kind of legacy days, uh, and we need to change that way. I think. Yeah, uh, and Ben, it it feels like that you know Cloud Foundry, and if I look at Pivotal specifically, are focused at that you know th those large enterprises. It seems they're getting a lot of traction. We see you know big companies that are on stage and, and here, which it, there's a large opportunity there, but it. Different from what I see at you know certain shows where you're seeing smaller companies that are you know maybe embracing Kubernetes and you know containers a little bit more and not looking at Cloud Foundry. What what, what are you what are you seeing? I, th I think it's pragmatic. I mean, uh, it's 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 totally not the the sexy thing to say. But at the end of the day, developers will kind of do what they are told to do because at the end of the day, they're in a job they have to deliver. So I actually think um, you know I, I spent some time talking to, to James Waters uh, earlier on to kind of get an update on where. Uh, Pivotal is with regard to PCF, and I think um, this theme of allowing the CIO to enable their people to do what they, their people need to do is actually the right one. It's a really pragmatic approach, and, and I think it's it's less about hey let's let's try and keep all these developers happy and try and be the cool cool tech vendor for the developer. It's about being the tech vendor that can help the the, the CIO be the hero of of their own develop development teams. Right. Kim, there was a good question at the, the new stack uh, panel this morning. Mm -hmm. How do people keep up with you know, all of the new things? And uh, of course, there, there's many answers, but you're, you're involved in lots of meetups, uh, lots of different channels. Uh, you know, what, what are you seeing as some of the, the best ways for people to try to get involved and <laughs> you know, try to keep up? <laughs> it's an information overload. Yeah. Um, I would say tailor your feeds, whatever they are, uh, to be very finite into the things that matter most to you. So, like they were, like Sarah and some other folks said, you know, there's telepathy, there's uh, Slack, there's you know, mailing list, uh, Twitter, obviously, uh, user groups, GitHub, that kind of thing. 
um, it's really important. I mean, I think a lot of us have gone through and, and looked at talks and, and videos after in a conference, maybe we weren't able to make it. And so those are super valuable um, to kind of hear what the State of the Union is on certain things, you know. And I like seeing independent analysts talk about, you know, a project, right? I think my customers enjoy that and that they want to hear it from an objective perspective, not just the company branding, so, yeah. I also I think people still share things on blogs, even in yeah, 2017, yeah. right? Yeah. A, a real world development experience uh, yeah. out there in, in, yeah. in, as it goes. Um, in your new, uh, as you're moving on in, in, this, in, the, in your role at Google, mm -hmm. uh, will you, uh, is there a broader role uh, that you'll be looking at in terms of this whole ecosystem of, of developers and, and operators? Um, broader role. Uh, so building a program and basically uh, mm -hmm. attaching myself, and I, we always laugh and say someone has to do a shot for every time you mention Kelsey Hightower's name. <laughs> um, but um, we, uh, Kelsey and I are kind of going to be sticking together for a little while and I'm going to kind of see what works for him. Uh, I've did programs like this at IBM and at CenturyLink for Jared and, and those folks and so I just want to see what the state of the union is there. In for your, sure. uh, you said, I mean, you've been involved with Cloud Foundry for, yep. you know, for years. I mean, w w can, you, can you pull one or two things that you really have enjoyed about this community and, and, and how it has grown and, and you know, that, that, that people uh, might not know if they aren't a part of it? Yeah, I think if you were here two years ago, um, it very much looked like the Pivotal Show. And there was a, a very uh, close, uh, you know, foundation had just been formed, and so it, it, there was not really a lot of, there was like a kind of a blurry line between where foundation picked up and where Pivotal stopped. Um, and so those other companies that helped found, you know, the foundation and the project and were contributing upstream, I think, kind of felt like, oh, well, okay, this is, you know, we'll, and we're kind of all in this together, but there was definitely a little, how do we do this kind of thing. Um, this year's show, um, even from last year's show, has grown significantly. Um, and the big differences are, we've got people from all over the globe contributing to the project, where I feel like we had a few places here and there early on. So, but I love meeting the people and hearing their stories. Mm -hmm. and, so. and ben, with your analyst hat on, what are you going to be looking at the next few days? Yeah, so I mean, as I said, it's the first time I've actually been here, but I have been following it since day one. And I think, uh, you know, I, I agree with Kim. You know, I, I said uh, a couple years before the foundation was formed that it was time for it to, to for the project to grow up and, and move out from, from VMware as it was then. And, and that's happened. And it is actually, um, it's actually quite neat to be here and to see that it isn't all pivotal centric. I mean, the fact that Microsoft is now yeah, a big, a big part of the uh, of the foundation. Uh, it does feel like uh, a mature and a vibrant uh, ecosystem, uh, and it feels like uh, things are in, in good good form. Uh, ben, slightly different question for you. Uh, you also wear a hat of uh, working with a number of startups uh, as an advisor. You know, what do you see in the marketplace today? What what are some of the, the big opportunities and big challenges uh, for startups? So I think. Um, Helping with the complexity. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the the world is going to be increasingly heterogeneous, whether that's multi-cloud or cloud or hybrid cloud or whatever uh, name you want to put on that. So, so helping tools that help people uh, wrap their arms around this increased complexity. Um, so there's a real opportunity there. Things are getting busier. Things are getting more and more complex. And so removing some of that noise is uh, is, a, is a good opportunity. Well, if, if you don't like the complexity, you could always just live on Google's platforms and, and the things that they enable, right, Kim? <laughs> I think mm. we are up to 60-something products now and more coming, so I, ooh, it's a lot. All, all right, uh, Kim, I want to give you, uh, and Ben, final word, uh, you know, takeaways from the show, maybe Kim, some of the community aspects. Um, and yeah, we're, uh, we're on day one, really. Yesterday was kind of day one, you know, with uh, the different workshops and hackathons and things like that. I'm really looking forward to more talks in the tracks today, um, and tomorrow we have diversity luncheon, and we'll see how uh, the keynotes go in the morning, but I'm meeting so many great customers, and so I'm looking forward to meeting more tomorrow morning. Yeah. Ben, you go to so many shows, what differentiates this one? Yeah, I do, and, and for me, you know, I'm not, I'm not an open source fanatic by any stretch of the imagination. I equally go to proprietary uh, vendors and product shows as, as well as these ones, but what I will say is that I've been impressed with the um, the coming together of the community and the supportive environment um, among you know, the organizers and the attendees, and so that's, uh, that's really refreshing to see. All right, well, ben and Kim, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for John and myself, uh, thanks for watching. We'll be back with lots more programming, and thanks for watching theCUBE.